as we release our spirits into the hands of God so that we can get supplies of grace this is your moment make demands on heaven make demands on heaven right now Do not stop, do not stop, do not stop. The crews of oil shall not fail. The crews shall not fail. Do not stop. You are receiving what will sustain you in the days to come. Oh yes. Sabo lento compre ba santaria. Lembro con satila boboria bacanda baba yesosi. You are receiving what Cameroon needs. You are receiving what the United States of America needs. The crews of oil shall not fail. sustains it will not be truncated.
Your life will be a confirmation of the fact that grace can turn a man's story around. The places you are tempted to influence that you were frustrated. You'll go back there. And grace will rewrite the story of your previous experience in the name of Jesus. Maybe your city is known by spiritual dryness. The very system of the kingdom of darkness has been established in your domain. There is an economy that is at work in your spirit that has the potential, the capacity to change the climate, change the texture, change the terrain. You will not go empty-handed in the name of Jesus. God. I remember many years ago, 15 years ago, this, this place was dry. And when you try to puncture the atmosphere, the demons will haunt you. I don't have time to tell stories. The demons will haunt you. It was obvious that the covenant that kept the land in darkness was still fresh. The vitality of the altars were still fresh. And so when you introduce any contrary thing trying to dispossess them of authority, oh my God, the, the backlash was intense. The backlash was intense. Those days I was still a pub, public servant and for five years I got no promotion. Everything began to dry out. But you know what? The Bible says they continued. If you can find the courage to continue, if you can find the courage to press on, I found out that the secret is to continue. Satan will whip up every sentiment around you and about you just to get you to throw in the towel. If you can find the courage, if you can find the masculinity, if you can find that, oh my God, the fighting spirit to continue. Endurance is the ability to outlast the devil. We continue. We continue. And it came to pass that everything that Satan stole from me, my promotion, I had double promotion in one year. One year. And they paid me all the money that I was supposed to have. That was how I built my house. The government saved money for me. Yes. We continued. So when I saw that sign, I knew that I was, I was doing right. So I, I was motivated to do what? To continue. Oh my God, have mercy. I made a mistake and the mistake was to pray. And it's a mistake I will never recover from all my life. When we continue, I didn't know, I was not, I was just a teacher. I was just a teacher. Just, I would take scripture and expound and then intercede. Teacher intercessor. That was the grace that was available in my life. But when we continue, when we continue, when to minister somewhere, they say, ah, is he a prophet? I don't have answers to those questions. All I know is that I continue. So what I've experienced today is not the best that God can give. If we continue, we are going to see, all, oh my God, if you must compete, don't compete with others. Compete with yourself. There is a manifestation of the grace of God on your life that will best the previous one. Oh my God. Please help me tell someone, continue, continue. If Satan cannot stop you from continuing, he cannot stop the outcome that God has made available. So in a moment you are going to receive strength to continue. I studied the book of Acts of the Apostles again and again because it's like 
a textbook for us. It's like a textbook. And I found the world continue. These guys were ordinary guys. They were normal people. But in their service of God, they decided to be consistent. They decided to continue. And God transformed ordinary men and made them extraordinary people. Can you, can you receive grace right now to continue? Receive grace. Receive grace to continue. I will continue. I will continue. It doesn't matter the situation, I will continue. It doesn't matter the circumstance, I will continue. Then you enter into grace, you enter into grace, you enter into grace, and yet into grace, layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. We receive grace to continue. Grace to continue. So that we can become everything that you have ordained for us to be. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And so we ask tonight that you pass through our midst. Activate us. Lighting our lamps with flames from heaven. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you indeed. So turn your Bible to the book of uh, Revelation chapter 1. So we were, we were carrying out a research. Revelation chapter 1, beginning from verse number 9. John is introducing himself to us afresh. And he says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos. For the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. The moment he tapped into the frequency of the spirit realm. Then he began to hear the, trump the trumpet blast. And you see, that's why it's good to be in the spirit. And my definition of being in the spirit is when you are alive to the realm of God. I know that the moment you became born again, you were brought into the economy of the spirit of God. I know that. But there is another meaning for in the spirit. When you become alive through the Holy Spirit about the activities that are sustained in the realm of God. So what happened to John was that he switched into spirit reality through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And when he entered into that realm, what he heard was the sound of a trumpet. But you see, the Holy Ghost was there with him and the Holy Spirit interpreted the meaning of what the trumpet was declaring. And what did the trumpet say? He heard a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. 
and what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Titeria, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. If you look carefully, you will see the purpose of the encounter. God wanted Apostle John to write a prophetic book in order for him to be equipped sufficiently to write this prophetic book, he had to have an encounter. An encounter with God as the Alpha and Omega. That is what is going to qualify him to be able to write the kind of book that God wants him to write. This encounter of God as the Alpha and Omega is what gives him access into the economy of God that can make him understand things that are in the past, things that are in the present, and things that are in the future to come. You see, there are loads of grace that are tied to encounters. I remember I went to preach in the city of Zaria. And I think the lady is here, um, Rahila. Where are you? She's here. That lady, that young lady, she, she was in the university then. You may not even remember, it was in Congo. You were leading worship, and the Holy Spirit possessed her. And, and the whole place was saturated with the glory of God. In fact, while I stood there, my eyes in the spirit were open. I was no longer seeing the ceiling. I was seeing my life after this life. In the glory of Jesus. That was what I was seeing. And the things I saw are not for public consumption yet. But after the encounters I had and I saw the glory of Jesus beyond this age... And I saw that I had favor with Jesus beyond this age. After I had those encounters, then they, I, I could see the angels that walked with me. They were no longer hidden. And one of them told me that he had a message from Jesus for me. And what was the message? Take my presence and power to the peoples of the world. That's how I entered into power ministry. It was just an encounter. And the product of the encounter was that a new stream of grace began to flow in my life. Now, prior to this time, John had written apostolic books. Book of First John that brought admonitions to the body of Christ, deep revelations to the body of Christ. But the book that he was about to write was a prophetic book. And in order for him to be able to write in this regard, he needed a fresh encounter from God. It was that encounter that came with a consignment of grace that will galvanize him to write a book that connects the past to the present and connects the present to the future. Now, God will be assigning fresh grace to individuals in this conference and to those that are participating online, and those that will listen to this message, maybe in two years' time, in three years' time, you also will stumble into the pool of grace that God wants to stay tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. So this man was receiving encounters. He was still in confusion. And in the next verse, he now turned to see the entity that was speaking with him. And when he turned, he saw seven golden candlesticks. God was communicating with him using metaphors. And just in case you know the Old Testament very well, you will know that what is on display here, the imagery on display here is the menorah. And when we went to Israel for pilgrimage, uh, where, where did we, 
Where was it that we went? Uh, well, I've forgotten the name of the location. But I saw the real menorah. I saw it. And it, it, it's, it's almost, almost the height of those lights there. The real one. Almost the height of those lights. I say, my God, with, with the seven lampstands, I, I saw that. So if you are used to the Old Testament, you must have stumbled on the menorah again and again. But you see, in the realm of reality, the menorah was a metaphor that symbolized something else. For instance, while I was ministering yesterday, I saw Apostle Gideon wearing golden boots. But I knew that was a metaphor. So you need to press again to find out the meaning of that sign. Because God speaks with pictures sometimes. And when God speaks with pictures, I hope you know pictures can carry more detail than stories. In one picture, you can have so many stories to tell just in one picture. The colors mean something. They you know, so some, when God wants to compress his communication, what he does is that he speaks with pictures. And so God was speaking to this man with pictures, and the picture that came to him, the imagery that came to him, was the imagery of the menorah. Seven golden candlesticks. It was when he began to conduct an inquiry in the book, of Revelation chapter 1 verse 20, the angel now begins to unveil the meaning of the metaphors he had seen. Meanwhile, it will interest you to know the kind of book that he was commissioned to write on the basis of the encounter he had with God as Alpha Omega. In verse 19, you will see the nature of book that he was going to write and all of that was sponsored by a certain grace that was bequeathed to him because he had an encounter with God. You will not miss your own encounter tonight. Yeah. And the encounter that you are going to have is going to be the reason why a new strand, strain of God's grace will become functional in your life. Yeah. My pastor that raised me is a teacher. So I served under him. You heard him say it. I was an usher. And while I tried to exercise my office as an usher, sometimes you will see some people sleeping in church and you, 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 you just touch them you, to revive them. The moment you revive the person, the person will say something like tongues and, and warn you that he was in a vision. I was, I was in my spiritual migration. I was gaining ascendancy. He was sleeping. So we used to encounter all those kind of stuff. But who would have told us that serving as an usher was the pathway that God has ordained for me to partake of the teaching grace that was on my past? So... I inherited the teaching grace that was upon his life. And for many years, I believed I was a teacher. Until this moment, I believe that the grace that I've exercised the most all through my life is the grace of a teacher. And that I got by inheritance. You know, I told you about my history of stammering, and you saw my pastor. He, he, he is an orator. He knows how to speak. So when I inherited the teaching grace, I also tapped into the oratory dimensions. It doesn't matter what I want to explain. The moment I can think about it, I have the words to drive that revelation. I got all of that by inheritance. And I operated as a teacher for a long time. But you see, it was the Holy Spirit himself that interrupted me through an encounter to alert me of the fact that I was not called into the office of a teacher. Many years later, meanwhile, I was already doing well as a teacher. Now, this man was functioning as an apostle. 
But there was an encounter that he had. And that encounter was going to release an embossment of the prophetic grace upon his life. Because he's going to write a book. He said, write the things which thou have seen. That's the, his current encounter with Jesus. And the things which are things that have taken place previously. And the things which shall be hereafter. So, you see, in order for him to do this, a great measure of the prophetic grace was going to be released into his life. So another phase of his ministry is about to be launched. And that presupposes that there is a fresh dimension of grace that is going to come upon his life to power that dimension. And that grace was bequeathed to him by an encounter. So I had an encounter. That's how the prophetic grace turned loose on my life. The teaching grace I inherited was still there. But because of the assignment, are you with me? God sponsored an encounter that opened up something that I never thought was available to me. It doesn't matter the grace with which you began the race. The more you begin to understand the need that is in the house of God and the things that God has chosen you to do, God has a way of sponsoring an encounter that will unleash another dimension in your life. And that's what tonight is about. Tonight is that encounter night that will be the reason why a different strain of grace will become factored and functional on your life. Oh, that amen is dead. <laughs> In Revelation chapter 1 verse 20, John's tour guide began to give him perspective of the meaning of the metaphors that were contained in the encounter that he had with God. So this is why I got my interpretations yesterday. I was in a hurry yesterday. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. Are you there? So this is interpretation time. Whenever you receive an encounter and you do not know the meaning of what you saw, the understanding of the things you have seen in the spirit is not yet fruitful, it means God is calling you to deeper prayer. You see something, you just came out of a dream and you cannot interpret the meaning of the things that you saw. It means God is saying, I want you to labor before me in prayer. So when, 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 when you labor in prayer, the spirit of wisdom will come upon you. It is through the spirit of revelation that you encounter the things that you saw. And if you want to understand the meaning, you will need the spirit of wisdom to come upon you to interpret the metaphors and to isolate the meaning from the symbols. And that's why the Bible says that we need the spirit of wisdom and revelation that furnishes the knowledge of him. If you are going to grow in the knowledge of Christ, which is the entry point into grace, you will need the spirit of revelation and the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of revelation is going to bring give you access into the realm of the spirit. And when you arrive in that realm, you are going to see the language of the spirit. Sometimes the language of the spirit is not in plain words, it's in pictures. And if you see the language of pictures, you will still need the spirit of God in his stream called the spirit of wisdom to unravel the communication and bring into your fruitless understanding the meaning of what you have just seen. So one of the things that will also happen as we begin to advance is that some things you have seen in ancient times and you did not have the wisdom, the requisite wisdom to unravel the meaning, as we continue in this procession tonight, there will be an unlocking in the spirit and the understanding is going to come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me, as long as you do not understand that which God is offering you is not yet yours. As long as what you saw is still a symbol and a picture and you do not understand what God is communicating by showing you the metaphors, it is just a picture. 
the moment the Holy Spirit unravels it and it becomes clear what he's saying to you, then you will know the extent of commitment he's willing to bring to the table and a new economy of possibility begins from that point. So things that have been shown you long time ago that you were not diligent enough to labor to enter into the economy of understanding, God will be opening things up tonight as we progress. There will be, there will be, oh my God, there will be, there, Jesus will be opening you up and he will be bringing understanding to many things that he has put before your face in the name of Jesus Christ. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. Then he speaks. The seven stars are the angels, the angelos of the seven churches. You see, it, it's good for you to observe the context in which God speaks. It will help you understand what God is saying. If you go back to chapter 1, you will notice that the aspect of the church that God is speaking about is territorial. And how did I come to that conclusion? You will read the church in Ephesus. That's a territory. The church in Smyrna. That's a territory. The church in Pergamos. That's a territory. Because the church, are you with me? It's an eternal organism. Hallelujah. And because we are an eternal organism, you can look and consider the church from the eternal standpoint. That's one of the encounters that Apostle Paul had when he went to Arabia for honeymoon with Jesus. He saw the civilization high up in the heavens. Hallelujah. Oh, you're not with me. Okay, do you, still, do you still believe the Bible? Jesus was the one that said, ye are the light of the world. Have you read that scripture before? Do you believe that? Jesus also said, ye are a city that is set upon an hill that cannot be healed. But it's easier for you to believe that you are the light of the world. But many of us don't believe that we are a city. And it was Jesus that said that. It is when you go to the book of Revelation that you will see the city that we are is called the new Jerusalem. It's an organic metaphor. God began in the garden, but God will end with a city, an organic city. And he said, ye are that city. All right, so Paul brings perspective and he sees that eternal organic reality in the heavens. So it's possible to discuss the church as an organic eternal entity. It is possible to dis describe the church as a universal entity. It is possible to describe the church from the standpoint of its function. It is also possible to see the church as a territorial thing. In this prophetic parable that God is giving Apostle John, the church is seen from the territorial standpoint. Just like my friend Dimeji, he's from California. Uh, hallelujah. Even if Satan dwells in California, the fact that Dimeji is in California, God has found a house in California because God is the entity that possesses Dimeji. So anywhere Dimeji is, God is because of his territorial connection with California, he is one of the functionaries that God will look to if God wants to bring a change in the territory. So the context in which the church is beheld in the book of Revelation chapter 1 is territorial. So if we say the interpretation of the stars that are in the right hand of Jesus, are you there? Are the angels of the churches. And the word angels is agelos in Greek language. And if the church is being considered in this context as territorial, the messenger of these churches is not an angelic being from heaven, is the pastor, the ministers, 
that are ministering in that territory, those are the functionaries that qualify as agelos in this context. Are you, are you following what I'm talking about? Now, it is because of this understanding of who a minister is as revealed by these metaphors that I opened to us the book of John chapter 3 verse 31 yesterday. Because if the metaphor that depicts a minister is a star that is held up in the right hand of Jesus. Are you seeing that? According to the book of John chapter 3 verse 31 therefore, this is what Jesus said. The proof that we know that you are coming from above is your speaking. He that cometh from above is above all. That means one of the proofs that suggests that you are functioning from above is that you have authority over and above every resistance and every limitation. If we notice that in your life, there is evidence that you have authority over and above everything that is in your territory, we will conclude according to the presentation of this scripture that you are from above. Secondly, the Bible says, he that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. One of the ways also we will know that you are from the earth is that you speak from the earth. You speak about the earth. You speak the things that are in the context of the earth. The Bible says, he that cometh from heaven is above all. Verse 30, next verse. And what he had seen and heard, he testified. If it is true that you are one of the stars that Jesus is upholding with his hand, and the meaning of that is that you are a luminary that is held up in the galaxies of God, you will be able to see the things of God you will be able to hear the things of God and that is what will determine what you will speak. So if we listen to you speak, we will know if you are one of the agelos that Jesus is holding in his right hand. And I told you about a pastor Sunday morning. Somebody was hungry for God in his city driving around church to church and decided to settle in one church. And the message that morning was talent. So he said, all right, there's, there's a mix up here. Maybe uh, the pastor did not wake up on the right side of his bed, so he will try again next Sunday. He drove from his area and went to... I think the, the, the next Sunday was worse. I, I don't know. I've forgotten. The, you see, he, the, the hungry believer was expecting too much from the pastor. Because what he will speak is a description, is a proof of where he's coming from. He that is of the earth speaketh earthly things. The one that is held up by Jesus to be in God's galaxy will have the capacity to see what is happening in that realm and to hear what is happening in that realm and to testify about it. Somebody's not hearing what I'm saying. Now, the proof that we are up there is in our seeing and what? And that is what is going to preoccupy our speaking. Number two, Jesus said that in the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 20, Jesus said that the seven candlesticks that thou sowest are the seven churches. So we have two things there. The seven candlesticks are the seven churches. You will notice that when Jesus was walking in the midst of the seven candlesticks, there was no fire on the candlesticks. But like the schematics that we saw in the book of Zechariah, there was oil. There is a system that has a reservoir for oil. And just so that you will know that there is no end to the supply of oil, the only trees that are the sources of this oil are standing left and right. So just in case we expend all the oil in the bowl, 
The olive tree that is the source of the oil is on standby. It's when we got to the book of Revelation that we now understood that the olive tree standing there is actually Christ that was manifested in the Old Testament and Christ that is now manifested in the New Testament. That as long as Christ is with us and we are in Christ, we will never lack the oil of the grace of God. Somebody needs to say amen. amen. But in spite of the fact that Christ is present with us in this covenant, we are in him and he is in us. We are in him for our deliverance and he is in us for our victory. Because he's been in us, he makes available to us his grace, which is the supernatural resource that gives us the capacity to operate beyond the limit of humanity. So he's in us for our victory, and we are in him for our deliverance. Are you still with me? So in this arrangement, grace is a commodity that is readily available. But you will notice that the condition of the churches in Asia, one of the churches, namely the church of Ephesus, had lost her first love. There were ailments that were associated with the churches apart from the church Philadelphia. Even though grace was available, even though Christ was walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. There were still ailments that had befallen these churches. And the reason is because there was no fire on the lamps. But we started an effort yesterday to show us the meaning of each strand of fire that was before the throne of God. And God was sending this fire to the ecclesia so that it can become the illumination that the lampstands within their territories will bear. The thing about the flame in the presence of God is this. Just like we saw yesterday, if the spirit of adoption is the only flame you have re received, it will determine your level of intensity. Uh, are you there? not following. Are you following me? Please stay with me. I just want you to understand this. I want you to understand, comprehend it first before we go to the practical side of this presentation. The proof that you are in the galaxies of God is that you will see things and you will hear things. Please help me preach to your neighbor. You are not following me. The proof that Jesus is holding you in his galaxy is that you will see things that are not visible and you will hear things that are not audible so that you can bear witness of the resurrected Christ. Are you there? So you will see things that are not visible, you will hear things that are not audible and this is what will equip you to be a witness. And, uh, oh my God. If we have a witness in the territory, if we have a witness in the territory, such witness that can witness like Peter, who was able to say through the spirit of witness that thou art the Christ, thou art the son of the living God. And Jesus confessed that it was not through research that he stumbled upon that insight, that he came from his heavenly father. Are you, talk, are, you, are you with me? Jesus confessed that that insight came from heaven. That is what it means to witness. If we come into a territory and someone can witness about Jesus Christ, bring something about Jesus Christ that was not learned, that was not taught, but it came from God, it means there is a church in that city. As long as as the church exists in a city, the proof that the church exists, are you there? That the candlestick is in the territory is that it will bear the witness of Christ. 
So if we lack the witness of Christ in a territory, uh, organically, practically, we lack the church in that territory. Because as long as the church exists in that territory, and the church is in God's galaxy, are you there? Then we will see things that you cannot see naturally. We will hear things that you cannot hear naturally. And that is going to be the basis of your testimony. And that testimony is proof that God has an inroad into the territory. God has an outlet in the land. God is bearing witness through the life of this brother, of this pastor. And that is our duty in the land. But if we cannot receive that witness that is from heaven, it means there is no church in that city. You get it? Okay. Now, we saw yesterday that the first flame, one of the flames that is before the throne of God is the spirit of adoption. Now, these flames come to bring illumination. So, you see, once you have received the experience of the workings of the spirit of adoption, it gives you insight into how connected and how related you are to your father. And that is what swallows. Are you there? It gives you a revelation. It gives you illumination about the fact that you are connected to your father. And this illumination is what swallows up every form of depression, every form of inferiority complex, every definition about yourself that you got from your family, your household, that makes you feel unfit, is swallowed up by the illumination that derives from the spirit of adoption. If indeed the spirit of adoption is functional on your life and in your spirit, man, you will never be able to come to the conclusion that you are a failure. If you see yourself as insufficient, you see yourself as a failure, it means that that, that lamp is not bringing illumination inside of your spirit, man. And that may be one of the reasons for the numerous defeats that you experience in your walk on the face of the earth. Now, this is what I want to say to you. It is not possible for grace to be lacking. Jesus is the personality of grace himself, and his office is at work in your spirit. So grace is available, but fire may not be available. And the moment there is no fire, you don't have illumination to see the things of God. And when you don't see the things of God, you cannot understand by God's witness. You cannot understand by God's testimony. So you will be more involved. Your understanding will be about the natural. And uh, you, the description of your life will be consistent with natural circumstances and natural situations. But if that lamp is burning on your inside, you will begin to see through the light of that lamp and a different context of logic, a different context of understanding will be the reason for your confidence. When we see that kind of confidence in your life, then we will know that the lamp of the spirit of adoption has been switched on on your inside. And that's why you cannot see yourself as a failure, despite the circumstance. And I want you to understand Satan's activity of mind bending. If you ever experience a miscarriage, while you are trying to process what took place, Satan will show up and start taking you through classes in mind bending. The objective of the mind bending that Satan is engaged in is to make you accept a reality that is a departure from your true reality in Christ Jesus. So he begins to convince you through exaggeration and lies. And many of us fall sway under the influence of this spirit of, 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 of deception. If you fall to deception, it means that the lamp inside is not bright enough to make you see through it. Something is missing in your mix. Imagine me. You know how long I prayed that God should heal me of facial palsy. It was when I went to London um, 
for the last mission, Pastor Henry insisted that I need to see an eye doctor. And if I'm, if I'm, if I go to a mission field, even though I'm their father in the Lord, I operate under their authority because he's a man on ground. He's a man that has been contending with the demons in, in the place. So he's likely to help me with counsel that will make me navigate. All right, so he insisted that oh, you are not preaching today. You are going to, I, because I did one prayer in the night and we encountered some, some things in the spirit. My conclusions about the location where we stay, I've not concluded, but the, I'm still processing the understanding of the location. The location. Um, when I'm done with my processing in London, I will tell you the, the place we stay. This is what I discovered, but, but I, I'm not. I'm not true yet. So we, we we did some warfare in the night, and I woke up in the morning. My air, my eyes were red as blood, and that's why I wear those because. The prescription was that I should put it on until the eye heals. So some people thought that I've become blind. So. And they've been sending me messages. Now, so, Henry and his team insisted I visit the doctor. So I went and saw the doctor. All kinds of light they put in my eyes, blue light. Meanwhile, the moment I saw the doctor, he said, this is... Paul C7, that facial palsy. I, I didn't know he had a name. Paul C what? I said, what's that? He said, that's, that's what's with your face. I said, oh, amen, hallelujah. <laughs> now, so I've lived like this with this palsy. I can't change it. And I prayed and fasted. I said, heal me. And God said, he will not. That it, it's going to be like that for all life. But you know, the way my, I don't even remember how my face looks, really. Because there is a lamp I have inside that gives me insight into who I am beyond my face. So if I'm depressed because of the way my face looks, it means that lamp is not functional. That's what I'm saying. That's where defeat will come. Your defeat is traceable to the absence of the judging lamps in your spirit. There is a light that the lamp has given me in terms of the spirit of adoption that has swallowed any possibility of mind bending that Satan can bring to me on the account of Paul C7. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Oh my God. And you see, so I. Shh. My mom said, Go with surgery. You need to do. Oh my God. I say. Is it not someone that believes that he has, is, is sick that goes for surgery? I don't. May your lamp not go out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and it will, I have the resources. If they have a medical procedure in surgery to correct it, I have the resources for that. But God said he will not heal it. I will leave it like that. That's, this is how he wants me to be. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So when you are doing healing meeting, don't lay hands on me for, for I, the lamp. <laughs> don't lay hands on me for Pulse 7 to go. No. I believe it's a turn that God has allowed in my flesh so that I will be reminded every day that I am a human being. There are some dimensions of encounters you have you will need something to remind you. Uh, okay, don't worry. It's okay. Don't worry. Let me not take you deeper than that. You will need something to remind you that you are a human being that needs grace even more than the normal people. If the lamp is at work, God can make you overcome anything. So my, my security is in Christ that walks within me. And there is no situation in which I can be disadvantaged. If I am meant to operate in that situation, I cannot be disadvantaged because I can do all things through Christ. You will not come to that conclusion if the lamp is not at work, it's not effective on your inside. You will take an outlook, a description, an explanation of things that is consistent with situation and circumstances if the lamp is not at work. So the first lamp is the spirit of 
adoption. I will talk about the second lamp in 15 minutes so that I can minister for one hour. From seven to eight. Your lamp will come on. Don't worry. It will come on. You will see that God doesn't need a replacement. He doesn't need to replace you. All that he needs to do is to give you grace. In spite of your weakness, in spite of your shortcomings, you will find what grace can do in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, let us jump. Let us jump to the book of Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12. Verse number 10, this is a promise that God is giving the house of Israel. And this promise is going to be fulfilled tonight. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Now, so that's the second lamp. It's the spirit of grace and supplication. There are several things that you will not be able to see through the prism of God until you receive this energy. This energy will drive you on the tarmac of grace and bring you to a point where you see some things. You know the duty of a lamp is to give you sight. All right? So if you have the lamp of the spirit of adoption, it is the basis of your security within. No circumstance can make you feel incompetent because your competence comes from an understanding of the commitment of God on your life. When you receive the grace of the spirit of grace and supplication, this spirit energizes you this spirit propels you to go on spiritual journeys. And it is when you embark on spiritual journeys that you have the likelihood of stumbling upon your inheritance. Now, there was an activation that took place in the life of Abraham. And the activation that took place in the life of Abraham suggested to him that his destiny could not be fulfilled in all of the Chaldees that he was going to have to journey into a certain land. And it is in that land that God was going to make him a great nation and make him a blessing. So the object of the journey was for him to navigate through spiritual pathways in search of his inheritance. Oh, you are not with me. And you will, it will interest you to know that there was no map no map for the navigation was given. And this man was supposed to walk through spiritual pathways. God told him that uh, the land that you are going, I am going to show you. It means that every vision that Abraham had was part of the map. Every encounter that Abraham will have is going to be part of the map. Everything that he sees in the spirit was a part of the map. Are you here? If that is the case, it means Abraham cannot exercise the luxury of having a quarrel with God in transit because God will leave him in the wilderness. If you are still here, say amen. amen. So as you travel with the spirit of grace and supplications, little bits of your map, because Abraham is a prototype of what God wants to do in the life of every one of us. So if Abraham journeyed out of his context, journeyed out of his village in search of a place where he will receive an inheritance, you are also in transit. But you see, whether or not you will arrive at the location is dependent on if you have illumination coming from the lamp of intercession. When we call people for 10 hour prayers, we call people for five hour prayers, they say, Human beings pray for 10 hours. But you know what? All those capsules we formulated, like 10 hours prayers, 
we formulated all those capsules when we understood the culture that was established among the apostles in the book of Acts. So what we want to do is to do the same things that they did so that we can enter into the same economies of grace that powered their lives. So we came up with, with a product called 10 hours, 10 hour prayers. That is already a threat for a man of the flesh. 10 hours? The flesh is already, because the flesh does not like prayer. Take the flesh to, 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 to Sun City in South Africa with vanilla ice cream. You will find people running on the beach without anything for us in them. Confront the flesh with prayer. In fact, they will run naked. Confront the flesh with prayer and you will see the flesh will be weakened. You see, I found out in my work with God that the things that the flesh likes, the Holy Ghost does not like. And the thing that the Holy Ghost likes, the flesh does not like. So you need to get used to the things the Holy Ghost likes and stay there. It will weaken and paralyze your flesh and your flesh will no longer have the authority to suggest any line of action to you forever. So we came up with this product, 10 hours. Most people don't know the benefit of staying in God's presence and exercising your spirit for long. I found out we were taught prayer, we were not taught long prayers. And I am a researcher, and I can tell you with authority that there are dimensions of God you will never touch until you tune your spirit to pray for long. And when you pray for long, you cannot succeed except you are praying with the energy that comes from the spirit of God. So the spirit of grace and supplication comes upon your life to galvanize you for a trip <laughs> in the Holy Ghost. There are times where you will need to pray for long in order for you to see something. Then the lamp will show you parts of your map. The reason why many of you are stuck is that you did not have the impetus to travel in prayer sufficiently beyond your current location of civilization. And because of that, the lamp could not unveil to you the next phase of the journey. So you are stuck in transit. Your, your advancement has been truncated. Not because God doesn't want to supply. Not because God doesn't have all sufficiency to make available to you. But you were not willing to operate under the influence of the spirit of grace and supplication. I traveled in prayer. I did 18 hours for three days. I'm, I'm talking about 17 years ago. And in 17 years ago, I saw that we have a TV station. When I said it to the people around that time, they felt I was lunatic. You see, it, it, it was a lamp that gave me the illumination that occasioned my sight. My sighting of the station. When the time came for it to come, but we, we documented it. Even though people didn't believe in it, we, we documented it. When the time came for the station, I hope you know we're on TV now. We're on TV in many people's houses across Africa and the Middle East, as I'm talking now. You will never know the pathway that you are supposed to journey in order for you to lay hold on your inheritance. Every son of Abraham cannot fulfill his destiny at home. He must travel. Yeah. Oh my God. Are you with me? That is, that is the pattern that was established in the life of Abraham. And the place you are traveling to doesn't have a map. Everyone will need to use the instrumentality of the spirit of supplication and the spirit of grace in order to enter into bits and pieces of that map so that you are keeping step with the Holy Ghost and navigating to the terminals where you will lay hold on your inheritance. If at any point in time that journey truncates and you come under the cloud of confusion, confusion is not supposed to be a Christian experience. Confusion. Please preach, preach for me. Confusion 
is not supposed to be the experience of a Christian. The moment you come under the cloud of confusion, it's an indication of the fact that you have lost alignment, lost touch with the spirit of grace and supplication. Embedded in that enablement is the ability to travel to places in the spirit. As astronauts explore space, that's how we are called to explore God. And when you begin to explore God, he begins to show you parts of the map. Parts of the map that has to do with your own unique journey under the auspices of the Holy Ghost. And for me, part of the map was to be a global missionary. But I never knew. Uh, 24 years ago, I never knew that I was going to be preaching from nation to nation. Never knew. I just, I knew I was going to be a preacher. And I was looking forward to being a local champion. You see, you will adopt an insufficient understanding of your calling if you don't come under this illumination to show you the, don't talk too much. In fact, don't even write books. Don't write a book before you see the full scope of your journey. That book you in 10 years will be a lie. No, don't write. You will need to recall the book back when you enter in the, into the fullness because the book will look like darkness when you journey accurately for another 10 years. I see people going to the printers early. They are knocking the doors of the printers. Meanwhile, they have not yet taken root in the navigation. Every son of the kingdom of God is going to walk through pathways in the spirit under the influence of the grace of, of, of the spirit of grace and supplication in order for him to be able to lay hold of his inheritance. Turn your Bible quickly to the book of Job chapter 28 as I begin to attempt to round up. I will mention the other spirits for you. Because I, I, people have been sending me text messages. But, but trust me, I'm going to finish the rest in other services, other teachings, all right? Even, yeah, yeah, I'll finish. So you'll get the whole, if there is any message I want to preach in my life, it's the one I'm preaching now. So I'm going to do the rest in other services. Just stay tuned. You, I will finish it. Okay, but I will mention um, the rest of um, the lamps. Notice that each lamp has a unique aspect of your life that it unveils. And that will determine, that is what will inform how far you will travel. If the spirit of adoption, that lamp is not on, you are going to be defeated inside. You will become a creature that is subject to mind bending. You will not have the necessary security that you need to be happy in spite of the situation. Because sometimes when you pray, God does not change the situation. God changes you. He changes you and bestows the grace on your life so that you have the capacity to survive the situation. It's not every time he changes it. But in the midst of the situation, as you receive equipment to survive it, you will know inside of you the reason why you can get by is because of Abba. So it doesn't matter whether a legion rises against me. I'm more at home when you fight me. I'm more at home. I know my Abba, his capacity, his capacity on, on, on the war front. I know it. Hallelujah. And if you have not received the spirit of grace and supplication, it will impact on how you navigate on that spiritual pathway. It's not a physical pathway. Are you there? Because God says you will go to a land that I will show you. Even though the land is physical, your means of arriving there will not be physical. It will come through a spiritual map. And the illumination that will give you insight into that map is what we call the spirit of grace and supplication. The more you delay your prayer journeys, the more you delay your entrance into that economy. So the next time you see the caption in London, 10 hours, jump at it. 
because that's how the wise are made you will see danger coming to hit your business in the next 12 months and if you press you will see the person through whom the danger will come sack him before the danger come oh okay when i say that say hmm may you may you walk with the light of that lamp in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now i want to show you a book a, a, a scripture in the book of job as i round up are you there Job chapter 28, beginning from verse 7. If you travel on the path of intercession, you begin to see the map. Then you know what you were raised to do. You may not like it initially. Say, I'm not, I'm not capable. I'm not sufficient to carry out this task. It's not about you. It's about the workings of the energy. If you labor with God, God will convince you. Because the Bible says it is him that walketh in us. His workshop is on your inside. And he's walking to the end that you come to terms with his desires for your life. And the moment you accept his desires for your life, he gives you the capacity through his grace to do that which he desires for you. So it is God that walketh in us, both to will and to do according to his own good pleasure and in that scripture you will notice you are not mentioned it's God walking you know it is God that wills or God that gives us desires it is God that gives us the grace to accomplish his desires for us he doesn't consult you there is no grace for you to accomplish your ambition in that economy but there's grace for you to accomplish the will of God the grace of God doesn't exist to power anything that is of the flesh and that's why sin are you there so grace does not support sin grace is there to give you the enablement to accomplish the will of God so Abraham needed to stick with God in order for him to know the pathways to walk in order for him to arrive at the location where he will get his inheritance I was in the city of Kano those were the days we were doing like six hours prayers almost on a daily basis and there was a bright lamp of illumination that was held up for us in the spirit it was in one of those prayer meetings that i saw that god was sending me to makodi the place of your primary assignment is makodi makodi is a physical place but the way by which i got here was by a spiritual encounter that was the story of abraham he was going to a physical place but he was going to arrive at the place through a spiritual what? Encounter. That's how I married my wife. It was, it's a physical woman, but I came to connect with her through what? An encounter. So all sons of Abraham will need to navigate through spiritual pathways in order for them to arrive at their inheritance. If you lack the light of this lamp, you will not be able to fulfill destiny. Because you always be at the wrong places at the right time. Doing the wrong things. Expending your energy to accomplish ambitions when the vision of God is not yet complete. When you are old and you look back, you will see the graph of your travels has been from darkness to utter darkness to gross darkness. Meanwhile, the part of the just is supposed to be like a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. You will not lose your way in the name of Jesus Christ. So I round up with this scripture. Job 28. Verse 7. There is a path which no fowl knoweth, in which the vulture's eyes have not seen. The lion's whelps have not trodden it. None the fierce lions passed by it. He put it forth his hands upon the rock. He overturned the mountains by the roots. He cut out rivers among the rocks, and his eyes he had every precious thing. 
we bind that the floors from overflowing and the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. But the question still stands, where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Four creatures were mentioned here. The fowl. The fowl is detailed as he scratches with his rake fingers in search of things. The vulture is mentioned. It has positional advantage and compound eyes. Say, even the vulture himself cannot find this part. Say, the lion, as it journeys through the pride lands of the forest, he has not been able to find that part. The young lions, the cubs, the routes by which they navigate in order to receive training for hunting, they have not seen that part. Because the part is not in the natural. The path is in the supernatural. That's the path that sons are called to walk upon. It is only the light of that lamp that can show you where that path is. I'm talking about a place that angels do not know. So an angel cannot come to you and say, please, let's go there. If not, an angel would have helped Abraham. Only sons can know that path. And it comes when the spirit of grace and supplication comes upon your life. And I hope you know what a path is. It's a road that only one man can walk part time. That's how your destiny looks like. No son of Abraham will remain at home. All of them will travel through prophetic pathways, ways that are revealed by God. And the object of their journey is that they are in search of their inheritance. You will not miss your way. Today I'm connecting with you because I walked on a certain path. If I had not walked on that path, we would not be here today. And for those of you online, I am saying to you that there is a path which no foul know it. Only the lamp of supplication and bring sufficient illumination for you to design the path of destiny. Oh my God. He shines on me. Shines on me. <laughs> okay, let me. Let me read the others. Write it down. But I, I, I promise I will teach it. I will teach on it, okay? He shines on me. He shines on me. It's your grace. So that light that comes by grace will shine on you tonight. It shines on me. <laughs> it shines on me. Your grace, it shines on me. It shines on me. <laughs> it shines on me. Is your grace? It shines on me. It shines on me. Your grace. It shines on. Me. Should I tell you something? If you are not using this lamp. The people you made your friends are actually your enemies. And you will find that with time. Hmm. Do you realize that Apostle Paul said, Henceforth, know we no man. After the, You know what? He has experiences that he was not willing to tell us. Experiences of stabbing. I know you have had a few. And those people you, you lavish your love on. And then they pierce you. Because they became your friends without a lamp. If you know how much you need illumination, you will ensure that all the seven lamps with their full intensity of blessings 
at work in your life and your life will no longer be ordinary <laughs> how I wish I had time I will I will teach on so we have done the spirit of adoption that is what takes care of your security your inner security you are relieved from depression then we went into the spirit of grace and supplication it is the illumination that comes from that that delivers you from confusion because you know exactly what God is expecting from you and the moment you know it you know why it's called the spirit of grace and supplication? As you journey in supplication and the lamp opens, you see what God wants. Then grace now comes to become the energy to make you step into. That's number two. Then we have the spirit of life. We'll look at that. Spirit of truth. Look at that spirit of holiness we'll look at that the spirit of glory we'll look at that because grace is the pathway through which you walk the walk of glory okay, you see and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace so grace empowers you to walk in glory so we'll look at it how many do we have now? The last one, and, I, and that's the one I'm going to do last, is actually the spirit of grace. Not grace and supplication, but the spirit of grace. I might take two, two nights to do the spirit of grace so that you will discover that it doesn't matter what your name is, where you were born, the family to which you were born, the context, how many people died, your grandfather died at 27, Oh my God, all those human dimensions matter no more because we are luminaries that are held up in the galaxies of God. It will take an act of God for your life to begin to take shape, not an act of family. Are you with me? So we are going to do it. I'm going to continue. So stay tuned to this channel for those of you listening online and for those of you here that are going back to your uh, various locations I will complete the teaching because I want you to walk with the fullness of the intensity of the lamps of God it shines on me it shines on me your grace it shines on me it shines on me shines on me is your grace it shines on me it shines on me your grace it shines on me He shines on me. He shines on me. Is your grace? He shines on me. He shines on me. Your grace. He shines. On me, he shines on me, he shines on me, is your way, he shines on me, he shines on me. Your grace he shines on me. Usadi mokoria babalanto minai. 
Selimo Combre Salitalia. Is I compelling a sick of His grace was shine on you. He shines on me. He shines on me. Shines on me. He always he shines on me. He shines on me. He shines on me. It's your grace. It's your grace. He shines on me. Shines on me. Your grace. He shines on me. He shines on me. He shines on me. The your way. Your way. He shines on me. He shines on me. Your grace, He shines on me. He shines on me. He shines on me. Your grace. All right, give me Psalms 18, verse 28. That's our prayer point. 18, verse 28. For thou will light my candle the Lord will enlighten my darkness that's what God does when the lamp becomes functional the darkness is enlightened clarity comes you know what to do you know what God wants you are no longer in the dark God wants to swallow every darkness of your soul by illuminating your candle can we pray tonight as a Lord? Light my candle. 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 Light my candle in the name of Jesus. Light my candle in the name of Jesus. Light my candle. Light my candle. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, light my candle. Someone needs to pray. Someone needs to exercise his spirit. Your candle is coming on tonight. It's coming on tonight. It's coming on tonight. Light my candle. Light my candle. Light my candle in the name of Jesus. Light my candle in the name of Jesus. Light my candle. Psycho Barabasi Cobrenta Baboria. Esso Sali Cobresco Filanto Kelabi. Jamai Compella Sacula. Jamai Cantorobo Sicostela. Es compala baboria si compresco malacuse sasila mahabalaita Your navigation will not stop the illumination of God will keep you going keep you going Sa voce se i capresco filambo, ma hai scossa sala bandeni, e cavolo si salento con palatalia. Me coseni mo coria, abracanda ba voce sali, e si a che noco, grande cascude ba palatoria, e scossa sila, e bramacande ba bonde casalato, e bratai ta compre e se calabo, abracanda ba voce sali. Iso sane ko baba ikete Andres ko vilato Iko basa menakari Abanda baboria Ayakolia 
Ya Siko Benda Aya Kabobo Santeli Ya Kame Susela Ika Matando Cobria Akazesi Akenda Bonde Magada Rakais Conteli Abranda Maboko Hamo Halaya Ya Kesela Ya Kebabakulaya Abras Kento Boko Abras Kalababoya Esa Mina Canteli Agai Kombale Agai Consela Amanto Cobra Laha Eko Simala Eko Centuria Agabo Buri Kasatea Agabo La Centuria Amanta La Baboria Kapalata Amakanda Babode Ketelia Eka Santo Coria Eka Landa Babolatua Amansa La Bababalaya Oh yes Lord
In the name of Jesus. Second and final prayer point. Job chapter 29 verse number 1. Job chapter 29 verse number 1. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, Oh, that I wear as in the months past, as in the days when God preserved me, when his candle shined upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness. Job made reference to an experience. He spoke about the candle that shined. That's what delivers you from confusion. When everyone else is confused, if that candle is lit, you will walk through the darkest seasons having direction from God. Light my candle. Light my candle. Light my candle. I want to navigate out of confusion, out of, out of the heaviness of this current time. Light my candle. Light my candle. Light my candle, Lord. Light my candle. Take the confusion away. Let me have enough light to navigate in this season of darkness. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. So what will happen tonight is that the fire from heaven will come and light your can. Fire will descend from heaven. Fire will come from heaven. And the Lord will light your candle. You have two minutes. Ah. You have two minutes to ask for fire. Two minutes. Not just a fire from anywhere, a fire from heaven. Fire from heaven. Your candle is going to be lit. Suddenly wisdom will come to you as to what you need to do to turn the tides for the kingdom of God in your city. Fire will come from heaven. Those of you outside, you are part of this. Those of you online, you are part of this. This is your moment. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. As your as philosophy begins to minister, just navigate in the waves of the worship in the atmosphere. And many things will begin to happen.
through darkness through the illumination of your candle in the name of Jesus Christ yeah I see that the candle is kindled already <laughs> it is kindled already this is the way of spiritual men they are supplicators they are intercessors they are the ones that travel in the spirit nothing of the earth the serpent the scorpions cannot weigh them down they have capacity to mount up into the heavenlies to see from the perspective of god your candles come alive today and you will no longer be in confusion because god gives you light the Bible says, Awake, O thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give thee life. He will give thee life. He will give thee light. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. All I ask, as much as you can, you just raise your right hand, as much as you can. If you are tired, if the hand is weak, you can bring it down. But as much as you can, you raise your right hand. Those of you listening online, even though you are in Chicago, all I ask is that you raise your right hand. You might be seated or standing any condition that is suitable to you or kneeling but make sure your right hand is raised now I want silence in the room silence in the room absolute silence so the Lord will go ushers you are not part of the people that should raise your hands please ushers because something, something will begin to happen here. Something will begin to happen here. The intensity will begin to increase. This is your moment, O oh Lord. This is your time, O oh Lord. That you might light 
the candle of your people. And that as the fire comes from heaven, if there is anything that Satan has planted, let it be burnt up first. Before the flames ignite the lamp that is in their spirit. Let the fire begin to come. Let the fire begin to descend. So that everything that you have not planted will be rooted out. So that their spirits might be ignited. No one will go back with darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. So if I say in Jesus' name, you say amen. We'll do that three times. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, today I confront every sickness, I confront every pain, I confront every affliction, I confront every curse, I confront every demonic inheritance, I confront every monitoring spirit, I confront the spirit of death, I confront liabilities that have traveled through the bloodline, and I break every investment of the devil in the name of Jesus. Everyone that came into this conference with a weight. A weight that was placed by the enemy. Either weights on their bodies in form of sickness and disease. Or weights on the soul and the spirit. Today... I command every weight on the body in form of sickness, every form of deafness. I challenge you tonight and I command deafening spirits to come out of the ears in the name of Jesus Christ. Every weight on the soul, weights of depression, weights of the sense of defeat, weights that have kept people in captivity for many years. Weights that have been strengthened by utterances that were spoken by loved ones, by teachers, by people in authority. I command the weights to be rolled out in the name of Jesus Christ. I also challenge weights that have been placed on the spirit. Accusations of the enemy that have kept people on one spot for so long. By the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. I command that way to be rolled away in the name of Jesus. Hey. Every curse. I see the spirits that accomplish. And watch over curses to perform them. I can see those spirits. So tonight in the name of Jesus. I take authority. Over every spirit. That came through idolatry. Every spirit that came through liability. Every spirit that came by inheritance. That is troubling your people here tonight. I cut you off. 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 off. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, the luggage is dropping. The luggage is dropping. Listen, there is someone here. I sense the spirit of death around you. The spirit of death is around you. I'm going to give a command. And the yoke will break. Yeah, there will be a manifestation. And also, I would like you to bring the person here. Father, that one... That the spirit of death has been trailing since the month of January this year. Death has been following that life. Today, 
in the name of Jesus Christ. I terminate the errand of death in Jesus' name. All right, there will be a reaction in the next um, 17 seconds. Also, as you just, you, you package them for me. Package them. Package them. There will be a reaction in, in 17 seconds. A reaction. A reaction. Death has been following you since January. But the stranglehold of death will be destroyed this night. Yeah. Yeah. So the prison house is breaking. I command those foul spirits that have been bending your mind. Mind bending spirits selling lies and deception because the candle was not burning high enough. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, I terminate your errand on your life. I terminate it in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of death can no longer accompany you around. I am seeing someone under the canopy. I am seeing someone under the canopy. This, that, this, this spirit of death matter is affecting somebody under the canopy. Under the canopy. And this is a, it's a serious matter. Father, that one under the canopy that the spirit of death has been pursuing since January. I ask that your mighty hand might locate that individual right now. Amen. Some ushers need to go outside. Oh my God, it's happening. Some ushers need to go outside and bring that person because that case is a terrible case. It's a terrible case. It's a terrible case. You don't come to the house of God to die. The only merchandise that we have here is called life. So let the power of the spirit of death be broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So as I speak, the, the gift of healing will hit two people in 17 seconds. In 17 seconds. Two people. One, two, three, four, five. I think there are more than two now. Oh, I'm seeing something. I'm seeing something being drawn out, being drawn out of the ground. Seeing something being drawn out of the ground. Somebody is being delivered. Somebody is being delivered. It's being delivered. It's being delivered. It's being delivered. Been delivered. I command that you break. Now listen, is that from outside? Yeah, so this is, this one is, this one is already gone, but we can pray her back. We can, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I terminate it. I terminate it in the name of Jesus. Now listen, listen, listen carefully. There were, I'm seeing an attempt of voodoo. You know, they took some garments off somebody's body, did some stuff with it, and buried it. And buried it. Now we need to rescue this person quickly. Just a touch, just a touch. We need to rescue this person quickly. We need to rescue the person quickly. I will give a command. And there will be a reaction. Father, that one whose garments, clothes were taken. Whose clothes were taken. And rituals were done on the clothes. And buried. So that we will be able to bring them deliverance. I ask that your mighty hand might be stretched forth. 
Locate that individual. Locate that individual. Locate that individual. Locate that individual. Okay. Okay, he has already gone. In 17 seconds, the person will be arrested. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Yeah. You don't come here to die. 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 You know what I'm seeing? I don't know. I don't know. I'm Listen. There's somebody I'm seeing in the spirit. And now I don't know if the person is in this location or the person is participating online, but the person has problems walking. Has problems with walking. So I don't know if the person is here or online. Oh, but I'm going to give a command. Anywhere you are, strength will come upon your legs. Strength will come upon your legs. Father, in the name of Jesus, I arrest that spirit of paralysis. Spirits of paralysis, be bound, be bound, be bound. Come out of the legs in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, let strength come upon your limbs in Jesus' mighty name. If the person can hear me, I challenge you in Jesus' name, rise up and walk. Whether you are online or on the premises, I'm saying rise up and walk. Ah, uh -huh. this is a good opportunity. Where is the other twin brother? Where is the other twin brother? Huh? Let's let's begin let's begin their deliverance. Let's begin their deliverance. Aise kela bokura. Aise kela santori. Aise makakodi bakadi. That which was used to tie you, I break it. I break it. I break it. That which was used to tie you. I break it. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. I say to you, you will not die. That, that cord into which you were initiated. I release you from the oath you took. In the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of witchcraft. Come out of you. Come out of you. Come out of you. In the name of Jesus. It's a good time. Now I give life. 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 In the name of Jesus. I give life in the name of Jesus. I give life. Somebody has been healed on the eyes. No, no, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Check your eyes. If you are the one, come. I have something for you. Someone has been healed on the eyes. Check your eyes. If you are the one, come. The person I'm talking about used to be short-sighted. The person used to be short-sighted. Your sight has been corrected. Your sight has been corrected. Come up the stage. That's being corrected. And the Lord said, that's the sign by which I will know. The person that will release, receive this grace that is upon my hand. Yeah, what happened to you? I have short sight problem. 
while I was praying, I see a blue beam of light. So now the eyes clear. So he used to be short-sighted. While he was praying, he saw something like a blue light. Yes, sir. I saw something like a blue light, and now his eyes are being corrected. Can we salute Jesus? <laughs> no. The healing is a way through which I can identify you. But I want to give you something. Hallelujah. So that you become God's messenger in your family. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask that you equip this man to go back to his family and be your voice. Amen. Let his witness of you be marked with signs and wonders Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, you are released. Many have come out of the graves already. Many have come out of the graves already. Where is that? Okay, yeah. Another healing on the eyes. You, you used to be short-sighted. Uh, where is Tony? Can you conduct an investigation on this? When they ask you, I'm talking to somebody, when they ask you, come and join witchcraft. Don't join. I'm speaking to somebody. Eh? Did you hear my message? Because... There's somebody in the congregation, they have been inviting you to come fellowship with witches. And you are considering it that you need power to change your situation. Yes, so Tony, what's going on with that guy? I'm looking for someone here. So how long have you been using this stick? Okay. Um, before I pray for you, I need to confirm something. Because the Lord spoke to me about someone that is having a problem with walking. Yeah, what's, what's happening with you? This, this brother has had uh, glaucoma for the past two years. Glaucoma? And then, yeah, and there's this pressure he's, he feels on the eyes, and uh, if he's to look at light without these glasses. Without the glasses, he will begin to feel the yeah. pressure. But right now. He can, he can see the light without. Yes. Hallelujah. He said he was, booked he was booked for surgery tomorrow. Oh, he's booked for surgery tomorrow. <laughs> Somebody needs to thank. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. Thank you. Take the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, before we pray for him, I want to be sure that he is the one. Uh, help me check online if anybody that couldn't walk has walked. So if there is nobody, then we'll pray for him. Because I'm following the leading of the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ. So, uh, some oil just dropped on my head now. Don't worry. There's a woman that oil will drop on you. You, you, are, you are this way. This way. So, oil is coming. Oil is coming. Oil is coming. To a woman that is this way. It's coming to you. It's coming to you. The oil of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the oil come on that woman. Let the oil come on the woman. Let the oil come strong. Let it come stronger. Let it come stronger. Let it come stronger. Let it come stronger. So bring her. Bring her. I have something for her. I have something for her. Come. Is it possible to? Yeah. Now it's a heavy anointing. It's a heavy grace. That God wants to entrust you with. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the fullness, okay, yeah. Hallelujah. Good. All right, we'll pray for him. All the people that cannot walk, 
I'm going to lay hands on them. Ones on wheelchair, the ones that were brought here on a stretcher. Can we pray for, at least there are two of them. Can we pray for this man on this wheelchair and this guy using this cane and ask that God will touch their legs in the name of Jesus. Now, what is wrong with his leg? He got broken? Injection. Okay. And you, what's wrong with you? Was it an accident? You slept and woke up and you couldn't walk anymore. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Can, can, we, can we talk to God? Can we talk to God? To have mercy on these two individuals. Oh my God, you are not praying like you, like you mean anything. There are kings. There are kingdoms. There are mountains and there are thrones. Only Yeshua will reign forever. To his kingdom there is no end. Oh, there are kings, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones. Only Yeshua will reign forever. In the name of Jesus. So you, what's wrong? You had an accident? And then your knee. It affected your knee. When, when did you have the accident? 18 months back. 18 months ago. All right. Father, we give you praise. We exalt your name. I speak to these bones. I say, come together, bone to bone. And I ask, let strength come upon the legs tonight. Let strength come upon the legs tonight. Let sudden strength come upon the legs tonight. Amen. Let sudden strength come upon the legs tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let sudden strength come upon the legs tonight in the name of Jesus. I bind every spirit of paralysis in the name of Jesus. I command the spirit of paralysis come out of the legs in the name of Jesus. I command strength to come upon the legs in Jesus' mighty name. Strength come upon the legs in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you feel my hand? Can you feel it? So the legs are not dead. You can feel this one? Okay. Can you feel this? Uh, wait. Can you feel this? You can feel it. So the leg is not dead. Alright, so you know what you do for me? Get a seat for this lady here. Get a seat for this young man here. Strength. Are you with me? Strength will come from heaven. And the moment it comes, I will come to the person that I believe the strength is coming to. Then I will assist you to walk. Okay? Want to do something quickly? Quickly. 
This is a time for the Lord to light the lamp now. Now, you need to know what lamp you are asking for. The lamp has a name. Have you been suffering from depression and all of that? The lamp is called the lamp of the spirit of adoption. Let that consciousness of your covenant with the Father become so loud in your heart. If you have been laboring under confusion, you just find yourself in confusion, it means that you are a victim of mind bending and what you need is the spirit of supplication and the spirit of grace. What is wrong with that child? What? Look for a seat and sit down. Let's finish this one. Father, if you can, your right hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you light the lamp. The lamp on the life of every one of us so that we'll be able to navigate through darkness in the name of Jesus Christ oh I don't know how we're going to do this but if you are a foreign delegate come and pass through this place let's touch you um, what you will do is Okay, you, I'll be standing down here. You pass, I'll touch you. You march on the altar, then you go back to your seat. So let me come down. Okay, um, Fred. So we'll just touch you, then you go. We'll touch you, then you go. The lamp of the Lord will burn on your life. And you will become a witness in your territory. Grace is released. Grace is released. It will never be the same as it used to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace. Grace is released in the name of Jesus. Brother Luke, grace is released on your life. On your life. Such things as you desire, they are bestowed on your life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Such things as you desire are bestowed, are bestowed, are bestowed, that are bestowed upon you. I bless you. I bless you. Such things as you desire are bestowed. Grace, grace, in the name of Jesus. Such things as you desire are bestowed on you. From Mozambique, receive the fire for Mozambique in the name of Jesus. Such things as you desire are bestowed on you. Are bestowed on you. Okay, move her to that side. We need to work on her. Such things as you desire, they are bestowed. Bestowed on you. Bestowed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Leave him, leave him, leave him, leave him, leave him, leave him. Yeah, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Yeah, when they sound the weapons arrayed against you. In the name of Jesus. Just raise her a little. Okay. mahadali. I take it from your mind. I take it. Zagobrisko fe la mina gadi. Se brote ke la halobo kuria si kobrisko fa la nil. I shut the door of access. I shut the door of access in the name of Jesus and I command the deposit. Come out. Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Father. 
such as you desire it comes upon your life in the name of Jesus receive strength receive enablement receive visibility visibility high visibility for impact in the name of Jesus grace comes upon you grace comes upon you grace comes upon you grace is your portion grace is your portion in the name of Jesus grace is your portion grace is your portion in the name of Jesus grace is your portion you are not going back to say you go back to be a witness you go back to be a witness to be a witness of his resurrection grace is your portion grace is your portion grace is your portion in the name of Jesus all the way to Botswana may the Lord's hand be strong upon your life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, grace is your portion. Your desires are granted in the name of Jesus. Grace is your portion. 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 In the name of Jesus. 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 Grace. Is your portion. Grace is your portion. Grace is your portion. Oh my God. I remove what was put on you. What was put on you, I remove it. I remove it. I remove it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Grace is your portion. Grace is your portion. The hand of God is upon you. The hand of God is upon you. The Spirit of God is over your life. This is your portion. Your candle is lit. Your candle is lit. It is lit in Jesus' name. Your candle is lit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your candle is lit. Grace is your portion. You will do impossible things in the name of Jesus. Your voice shall be heard. Your candle is lit. It's lit in the name of Jesus. Your candle is lit. Grace is your portion. Grace is your portion. And also for your household in the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, from Togo. Grace is your portion. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. The Lord that delivered you from the accident, He will deliver you again and again. The weapons of darkness will be futile on your life. In the name of Jesus. Grace is your portion. Grace is your portion. Grace is your portion. In the name of Jesus, grace is your portion. In the name of Jesus, grace is your portion. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, the Lord strengthen you. In the name of Jesus, you are going back with fresh grace, with new grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace is your portion. Grace is your portion. Grace is your portion. I bless you. I bless you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name I bless you I bless you I bless you in the name of Jesus 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 I bless you I bless you I bless you in the name of Jesus yes let the Lord's hand be strong on you in Jesus name he comes out he comes out of your Head. It will no longer be able to manipulate your thoughts in the name of Jesus. Yeah, you are free now. You are free now. You are free. Now. Grace is your portion. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Grace is your portion. Grace. Evidence. There will be evidence that grace has found you. 
that grace has found you. Grace comes, grace comes. The impossible, the impossible will be made possible. The weight that you carry is lifted. It's lifted. It's lifted. It's lifted. In the name of Jesus. Grace comes upon you. Grace comes upon you. It comes upon you. In the name of Jesus. 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 Go back equipped. Go back fortified. Go back fortified. In the name of Jesus. Go back with favor. Go back with favor. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, spot out on your vessel, spot out. Grace is poured out in Jesus' name. Grace is poured out. The hand of the Lord comes strong upon you. Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible with you. Grace. In the name of Jesus. 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 